Hi, and welcome back to another Save It For Parts channel tech review. In some prior videos on the main channel, I've been trying to build a homemade wind turbine. Most of those attempts ended up in very small pieces scattered around on the ground. Now, I'd still like to make my own, but in the meantime, Viver has sent us a real wind turbine to play with. So we're going to get this opened up, see what it looks like, and see how it performs. All right, we've got our installation guide. Got the turbine blades, and these are just a hard plastic with some metal inserts for the bolt holes here. We have a user manual. This seems a little bit generic. Viver has a couple different models of this. Uh, this particular one is a five bladed unit. Here's our nose cone, some tools and hardware. Not sure what this is, maybe some kind of spacer or mounting sticky stuff. We've got a little controller unit, and then this is our main wind generator. This seems to be a pretty straightforward, simple package. The specifications are right there on the tail. So this is a model FT500. It's rated at 500 watts power. Again, a five bladed unit, 12 volts. Startup wind speed is two meters per second. Rated wind speed is 13 meters per second. And then we've got our wheel diameter and weight on there. Now the manual does mention the survival wind speed is 55 meters per second. So the 13 meters per second is just the general operating wind speed, but 55 meters per second, it seems like is the top speed before you start getting damage to the unit. Translated to American, 55 meters per second is approximately 123 miles per hour. Now I looked up the maximum wind speeds in my area, and it seems like the record is 121 miles per hour. So theoretically, we should be able to leave this wind turbine up all year round and not have it be damaged. Now if a tornado hit we'd see higher wind speeds than that but we'd also lose everything else in the area so we're not going to worry too much about that right now. Now the little manual here is okay although some of the translations are a little iffy. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and follow this handy picture guide although it's also pretty generic. It shows several different types of wind turbines. Fortunately it seems like this is pretty straightforward. You just Attach the blades to the hub here, tighten down this center nut to link the hub to the motor. You connect your wiring down through a tube or a pipe. You hook up your wind controller and hook up your battery. Now I'm not 100% clear on which wires go where. Uh, this one has three blue wires coming out and the wind turbine has three red wires. So I don't quite know if it matters or not if which red wire goes to which blue wire. The wiring diagram in the manual makes it look like two of the wires from the wind generator go to ground and then one wire goes to all three of the inputs on the charge controller. Well, we can at least start installing the blades onto the hub and then we can worry about getting the hub assembly onto the motor later. So it's easy to tell which way these go on because there's a little teardrop shaped cutout here that matches this teardrop shaped piece on the hub. So that means our blades go like so. And then the nuts go into these little recesses in the back of the hub. Got this funky little driver wrench that comes with it, so that's really helpful for getting this all installed. All right, there we go. We have one nut and bolt each left over. I guess those are spares in case you lose a set while you're assembling it. I haven't tightened everything down completely, but this is the finished size of the wind turbine unit, so it's not huge, it's not tiny. Um, this would be pretty reasonable on a mid-sized to large-sized sailboat for a small cabin. It's probably not large enough to power, say, an entire farm or household, but it should be perfectly good for an off-grid location. Okay, I got the same resistance between any two pairs of wires here, so I think that means it's a three-phase AC generator, which um, is possibly a little extra spicy if we are working on this, we want to make sure to short these out so we're not uh, potentially shocking ourselves with AC voltage if it starts turning. Now the manual isn't super clear about whether it's AC or DC, but it does say to short those three wires before working on it. As far as mounting hardware, we've got this pipe that should fit right into the connecting collar here, and then we can slip this over another pipe or onto the top of a tower. All right, these wires should be pretty waterproof, and I stuck part of a pool noodle in here to support these upper wires. The manual says not to let all the weight of the wires hang from the motor, so we're going to have this supported by that uh, piece of foam jammed in here, and then we're just going to get this mounted up in here. All 
I'm trying to give this a good test, but it's pretty light wind here at the house, and it's kind of in between buildings right now. Now, we also have a lot of trees around, so it's not getting really direct wind here at the house, although it did start to spin just now, so it's getting a little bit of a gust. I hooked the charge controller up to a 12-volt car battery just to see if it'll do anything if we get a good breeze going. I still haven't seen that charge light come on on the controller, so we still don't have enough wind to actually charge the battery. All right, so we need a little more wind and we need a little better location. It needs to be up higher, it needs to be more exposed with fewer trees, fewer buildings around so it can get the most out of any weather conditions. I think we've got an idea for that. So we've come out to Sandland, which is my friend's off-grid property out in rural Wisconsin, and here we've got an ideal spot for the wind turbine. We've got a wide open field, it's up on top of a hill, and there's plenty of wind exposure from at least three directions here. So I think this is a good spot for our wind generator. In fact, this is where we've tried my previous homemade wind generators, which got so much wind that they blew apart and fell on the ground. So putting it up here might be a good stress test for it. Maybe we'll leave it here charging the battery and we'll come back in a week and make sure it's still here, see how everything's doing and see if that battery's charged up. As you can see, the wind generator is spinning around great. So it's getting a lot more exposure up there in this upper field than it was back at home. All right, yeah, we're actually getting enough wind that that charge light has come on, so we are now charging the battery. That battery that I started with is pretty flat right now, but it's not worn out, so it should be able to hold a charge, and if the wind generator performs over the next week, we should come back and have a nice battery ready to use for lighting, for inverter use, or whatever else we need it for. You might notice right below the wind turbine, we have a little solar-powered security camera, and it's nice to have additional power sources for stuff like that. It's a good combination to have both for a system like this that's off-grid. If you've seen some of my other videos, you know the upper field at Sandland is kind of our playground area. It's going a little bit slowly, but we are still getting the fast food playground reassembled here in the field. We also have some trampolines and other playground equipment up here. Since Sandland doesn't have city power, doesn't have any grid-tied utilities, it's going to be really nice to have some electricity up here. We can run lights, we can have music going, we can do all kinds of stuff relating to the playground, and having a permanent wind generator is really going to help out with that. We'll find a better home for this battery eventually. Right now it's just sitting on the barbecue grill. We're going to build a box for this or some kind of enclosure and we'll have a more permanent power system. Well, we've got a little Midwestern storm coming in. This thing stays surprisingly quiet, even in these 40 to 50 knot gusts. You can barely hear it spinning up there. I've heard wind turbines can be really noisy, but the wind itself is much noisier than the turbine. I'm earning this sponsored review. All right, we think the rain has stopped for at least a few minutes. Well, so far the Viva FT500 has been fantastic for our off-grid property here. It's great at charging batteries. We can run all kinds of stuff from our battery power. With or without an inverter, we can run 12 volt stuff. We can run 120 stuff. It works pretty well, even in relatively weak wind. 5 to 10 miles an hour seems to be all it needs to start spinning, and it seems to charge it up within a couple hours of steady wind or a couple days of inconsistent wind, which isn't too bad. It also had no problem dealing with high wind gusts. We checked the local forecast office and confirmed that the weather was gusting up to about 50 miles an hour when we tested it earlier. I have to say, this would have been great back when I owned a sailboat. I would have stuck this on the sailboat. That would have been fantastic for sailing around Alaska, charging my batteries, running my lights, running my power listening to the radio, uh, charging my phone, charging a computer, all kinds of stuff like that. This seems to be a really good standalone unit for a relatively windy area, or if you have a less windy area, or your wind and weather isn't that consistent, then something like this along with a solar panel is a good combination for an off-grid property. So far, despite some challenges with the local weather, I'm pretty happy with it. 
As far as pros and cons of the Viver FT500 wind turbine, it did have some confusing stuff in the manual, and the wiring diagrams were not very clear, so it took me a little while to figure out how to wire it together. I also never figured out what that black rubbery thing was for. That's still in the box someplace. Hopefully that piece isn't critical for anything. On the plus side, the unit was very quiet. I've heard some people have complaints about the noise from wind generators, and honestly, this thing was barely noticeable. I think you could probably run this in a city without having complaints from your neighbors. I didn't end up showing it in the video due to the rain, but we did end up using that battery for some stuff on the day of the storm, and it worked just great. And the unit is a convenient size. One person can carry it up a ladder, can get it all mounted and set up. I think this would be great for a small cab a boat, or even an RV. I hope this has been a good review for everyone. If you want to buy a Viva FT500 or one of their other mini products, I'll throw the links down in the description below and you can check those out. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.